Hello everyone and welcome to another video and today we'll be working question one from the January 2021 paper and here begins so it says 1a using a calculator otherwise calculate the exact value of 1 and 4 over 7 plus 2 over 3 minus 1 and 5 over 6 so first we know that we need to find the LCM but before doing that what I'll do is to convert each fraction here from, from for those that are mixed fractions to improper fractions so what we'll do is seven times one is seven plus four to give us 11 over seven plus we'll write back our two over three minus six one six plus five will give us again 11 over six so now we'll need to find our LCM and our LCM for seven, three and six is 42. So what we'll say is seven into 42 goes six times and six times 11 will give us 66 plus three into 42 goes 14 times and 14 times two will give us 28 minus 42 divided by six will give us seven and seven times 11 will give us 77. So what we'll now need to do is to add 66 plus 28, which will get 94 then subtract 77 and what we'll have remaining is 17 over 42. And this will be our answer in its exact form or the exact value that the question requires. So we'll just find our LCM and then do our regular fractions. Part two now says, write the value of the cube root of 27 over nine square as a fraction in its lowest term. So what we'll do is to first do the cube root of 27. And what we'll get is three divided by nine square will give us 81. And what we'll get is when we write that now, we, that can be simplified. Three into itself goes one time and three into 81 goes 27 times. And this is our answer for the cube root of 27 over nine square in its lowest terms. Part B now says the thickness of one sheet of cupboard is given as 485 times 10 to the negative two millimeters. A construction worker uses 75 sheets of the cardboard stacked together to insulate a wall. Show that the exact thickness of the insulation is 363.75 millimeters. So what we know is that 485 times 10 to the negative two so that's the thickness of one sheet and a construction worker uses 75 of those sheets so we're multiplying that by 75 sheets when we do that what we'll get is so when you put in your calculator 485 multiply by 10 to the negative two multiply by 75 what we'll get is three six three seven five times 10 to the negative two millimeters and should we now work this out by removing the 10 to the negative two so therefore shifting the decimal place two places to the left what we'll get is 363.75 millimeters and that will be our answer, which is showing that the exact thickness of the insulation is 
by part two now says write the thickness of insulation correct to two significant figures. So correct to two significant figures. Our first significant figure will be three. Our second significant figure will be six. We're not looking at the value that follows. Is it greater than or equal to five? No, it is, which means that our six remains unchanged. So it is three, six, and we write a zero as a placeholder because these numbers are in front of the decimal point. And we need the three to hold its current place value. And we also need the six hold its current place value and that is why we cannot write 36 our answer is 366 millimeters or answering to two significant figures part b now says correct so we're writing the thickness of the insulation correct to one decimal place so we're writing back our three six Point, and then our first decimal number is seven. We're now looking at the number that follows. Is it greater than or equal to five? Yes, it is. In this instance, it is equal to five. So we'll need to add one to this digit that we're interested in, which is the first decimal place. So the first number that is behind the decimal point. So therefore it will change from seven to eight. And therefore our answer correct to one decimal place will be 363. 0.8 millimeters. Part C now says we're writing it in standard form. Remember, our standard form look at is that our first number or the place where the decimal point is, it goes behind the first non zero digit, which is greater. So it's basically greater than one or equal to one, but at the same time is less than. 10 so therefore the value for n ranges from 1 to 9 so therefore moving our decimal point it will be going 1 2 2 places to the left so what we'll have is 3.6375 multiply by 10 10 to the second power millimeters and that is our answer in standard form so to form the standard form then it is usually written in the format of n times 10 to the nth power and or n for the first one the decimal point goes behind the first non zero digit and 10 raised to the n power or it's rather x times 10 to the n power the x is where the decimal point goes behind the first non-zero digit and the n which is 10 raised to the n is the amount of places that we move or decimal point and that is our answer Part C now says Marco is on vacation in the Caribbean. He changes 4,500 Mexican pesos to Eastern Caribbean dollars and he receives 630 Eastern Caribbean dollars. So 4,500 Mexican dollars and he changes it and he got 630 Eastern Caribbean dollars. And he says, complete the statement below about the exchange rate so it is saying one eastern caribbean dollars is equal to x mexican dollars so we're looking for x mexican dollars which will be equal to one eastern caribbean dollar so what we'll need to do is to cross multiply so what we'll get is x being multiplied by 630 and that is equal to 4500 mexican dollars being multiplied by one Eastern Caribbean dollars. Now solving for X, X is equal to 4,500 multiplied by one and all of that is divided by 630 Eastern Caribbean dollars. So therefore, when we do that working, X would be equal to, X is equal to, so it is 4,500 multiplied by one divided by 630. So therefore, X is equal to 7.14 Mexican dollar. So therefore, one Eastern Caribbean dollar is equal to 7.14 
Mexican dollars. And this is our answer written to two decimal places. So it was basically 4,500 divided by 630. And that is the end of question one.